Good evening. This is All India Radio Kohima. I'm Ketholeno with the evening news. The headlines. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar says democracy is best nurtured when all constitutional institutions are wholesomely in sync. Chief Minister Nipu Rio urges all to conserve and promote the bamboo industry. Central Board of Direct Taxes makes some offenses under Income Tax Act compoundable. And Union Sports Minister Anurag Thakur says 1,000 Kelo India sports centers to be set up in the country by 2023. Now the news in detail. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar has said that adherence to constitutional prescriptions by all institutions is a non-compromising, ordaining and inalienable facet of doctrine of separation of powers. Delivering Justice J.S. Verma Memorial Lecture in Jabalpur, Dhankar said that indisputably democracy is best nurtured when all constitutional institutions are wholesomely in sync and confined to their respective domain. He said any transgressions whosoever non-invasive, subtle and well-meaning by one in the domain of the other has potential to upset the apple cart of democratic governance. Referring to the recent unfortunate emergence of pernicious trend to target individual judges in public domain, the vice president calls for exemplary containment. This is reprehensible and cannot be countenanced if rule of law has to have dominance, he said. Talking about transparency in various institutions, Dunkar said that spinally strong, fair and independent justice system is the safest guarantee to the blossoming and flourishing of democratic values. The vice president urged that dignity of judges and respect for judiciary is inviolable as these are fundamentals of rule of law and constitutionalism and added that everyone in the country need to realize that no one is above law. World Bamboo Day is being observed today with a focus to raise awareness about the bamboo industry. On the occasion, Chief Minister Nipu Rio urged all to conserve and promote the bamboo industry. Rio said we need to ensure its sustainable utilization, promote new as well as traditional uses for economic development of the community. Chief Minister Rio said on this day, we acknowledge the bamboo farmers, artisans and craftsmen in Nagaland and across the world. Central Board of Direct Taxes, CBDT, has issued revised guidelines for compounding of offences under the Income Tax Act 1961. CBDT has taken this step in conformity with the government's policy of facilitating ease of doing business and decriminalization of offences. Some of the major changes made for the benefit of taxpayers include making offence punishable under Section 276 of the Act as compoundable. The scope of eligibility for compounding of cases has been relaxed where case of an applicant who has been convicted with imprisonment for less than two years being previously non-compoundable has now been made compoundable. The discretion available with competent authority has also been suitably restricted. Time limit for acceptance of compounding applications has been relaxed from earlier limit of 24 months to 36 months now, from the date of filing of complaint. The gross direct tax collections has registered a growth of 30% in the current financial year in comparison to 2021-22. to Finance Ministry said, as on the 17th of this month, the gross collection of direct taxes in 2022-23 to is at over 8,36,000 crore rupees compared to over 6,42,000 crore rupees in 2021-22. It said net direct tax collections have also grown at 23% for the current financial year. The ministry said there has been a remarkable increase in the speed of progressing of processing of income tax returns, ITR, filed during the current fiscal. Almost 93% of the duly verified ITRs have been processed till 17th of this month. This has resulted in a faster issue of refunds with almost a 468% increase in the number of refunds issued in 2022-23. to Refunds amounting to over 1,35,000 crore rupees have been issued in the current financial year till date. You are listening to the news from All India Radio Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on News on Air app and YouTube channel AIR News Kohima.
Senior BGP leader and Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports, Anurag Thakur, said that sports can help people overcome addictions. While interacting with voters, social activists, office bearers of cooperatives and trade associations in Mumbai today, he said that the central government can provide good facilities for sports and sports person, but it is in the hands of the sports associations and federations of the state to ensure that they reach the right players and make proper use of them. He appealed to them to realize their responsibility and work accordingly. He also urged that technology should be used for sports-related planning. He said that 1,000 Kelo India sports centers will be set up in the country and 590 sports centers have been approved. He also said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government is trying to make life easier for the citizens through many welfare schemes for various sections of the society like women, students, youth and farmers. Over 1 lakh 7,000 people voluntarily donated blood under Ragdan Amrit Mohotsav. The 15-day-long countrywide mega-voluntary blood donation drive was kick-started by Union Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Manviya yesterday on the occasion of 72nd birthday of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Over 6,000 camps have been registered for this mega drive along with more than 2,14,000 blood donors registered so far on e Rakt Kosh portal. Manviya said a new world record was created on the very first day with 87,137 people voluntarily donating in a single day. The campaign is aimed at increasing awareness regarding regular non remunerated voluntary blood donations. The Rising People's Party, RPP, has opposed the recent notification of the Principal Director, Health and Family Welfare Department, dated 17 September 2022, directing Chief Medical Officers, Medical Superintendents of all the districts to assess BJP medical camps to be conducted from 19 September to 1 October 2022. In a press release, the RBP said that the health department is not an extension of the BGP party apparatus, nor are the CMOs, MS or employees of the health department party karyakartas that the BJP can utilize the department's service at will. Therefore, RPP has cautioned that if the PD's letter is not withdrawn within three days, it will resort to agitation. And, in view of 12th session of the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly on 20th and 22nd of this month, Superintendent of Police Kohima has issued traffic regulations to be enforced as part of security arrangement. Only vehicles with car passes bearing X, Y, Assembly logo, LH, O and on assembly duty will be allowed entry to the assembly secretariat. During the assembly session, no vehicle will be allowed to be parked by the roadside from 6 a.m. onwards from BSNL Telephone Exchange till Classic Island, from Raj Bhavan till MS Classic Island, from Classic Island to assembly secretariat via Raz Point and High School and from new CM official residence Pezucha to assembly secretariat. Heavy vehicles will not be allowed to ply in Kohima town during assembly session from 6 a.m. till the session is over. All loading and unloading of goods in Kohima town should be completed by 6 a.m. No, no heavy vehicles will be allowed to be parked along D-Block Road. Further, the police will tow away defaulting vehicles and the charges will be borne by the vehicle owners. To end the news, the headlines here again. Vice President Jagdeep Dankar says democracy is best nurtured when all constitutional institutions are wholesomely in sync. Chief Minister Nipu Rio urges all to conserve and promote the bamboo industry. Central Board of Direct Taxes makes some offences under Income Tax Act compoundable. And Union Sports Minister Anurag Thakur says 1,000 Kelo India sports centres to be set up in the country by 2023. That's all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.